Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope uh, everybody's been enjoying all the uh, cuckoo clock beginning videos that I've been posting. I hope that you're learning things, because that's what this video set is all about, is for you to learn, for you to feel comfortable enough to um, to work on your clocks. And so uh, I hope that I'm answering all your questions that you might have. Um, I know I've been answering all the comments. And so, uh, so today, or this video set, we're going to be working on a clock that I recently purchased. And so uh, we're going to be taking it all out. Taking the movement apart, cleaning it. It's a musical cuckoo clock. So we're going to be working on the music box also. Uh, the reason why I purchased this uh, clock is because of the music box. Uh, I told the guy who is a, a friend of mine and a member of my group that, yeah, I want to buy the clock. Just so I could do a video on it. I didn't pay a lot of money for the clock. And so um, let's get started. I showed you a part of this clock in the last video that I did on how to pack up a clock for shipment. But the uh, guy that I bought it off of did a professional job in shipping the clock here's the pendulum the topper it's all bubble wrapped the weights he also and I should have mentioned this in the last video you can do this you don't have to he took a wire and ran it through the through the chain links that way the uh chain doesn't come up and get all mixed up in to the uh, uh, movement the way i pack the clock is i pulled the the chains all the way up so that the uh, round washer like link was on the clock Here's the uh, movement. It's nice and pretty. He told me that the clock did rock, run. And he works on clocks for a living and sells them uh, part-time. But here's the music box. It's a little bit different from uh, some of the other music boxes that I, that I work on. And so... Uh, I have to take this out and figure out how it it all works but um, it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be fun so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this pendulum these weights and this topper and set them to the side because I don't need them right now. And I've selected a container for my parts. This particular clock The nut, I believe, is um, screwed down onto the Mena Arbor center wheel. And 
There we go. It's the uh, square hand, square hole minute hand, which is uh, most of the time Herbert Herr does that. Or anti clocks. And if I have a video out there on adjusting your hands when it's a plastic uh, square hole minute hand and what to do. So we'll take the hour hand off, which is friction fit. I'm going to release the uh, the cuckoo bird, and it is plastic. And I'm going to release the little man that comes out. And he, they don't come out, the little men that's on these clocks. The modern-day clocks, they don't, they actually don't come out. That's about as far as they come. They just peek through the door a little bit. Bending the uh, wires with my fingers 90 degrees. And if I can't do it with my fingers, I'll grab a pair of pliers. And once you got the uh, wire that's connected to them bent 90 degrees, you pull it out of the uh, the steeple that it's connected to. If the steeple's loose, you'd want to push it back in. If the door's loose, the door has a bigger steeple in it that it's connected to. And then they use these tiny steeples here to connect the bigger steeple to the case. But you'd want to uh, make sure that they're secure. The next thing I want to do is uh, pull these wires out. And he did an excellent job of packing this clock. And here, there's some information on this door. And it says, repaired by Bruce in 1954. I believe it says 1954. Now I get the wires out of the way. I'm going to uh, unwrap these chains to uh, undo the chains. Before I take this apart, I should have tested it. And before I go any further, I am going to stick it in my stand and test it. So stand by. Here I have it in my stand. Um, it should be two different kinds of weights, which is no big deal. But the modern day weights do not fit on the um, the older uh, clips, so I will have to get a uh, a different clip or a um, a different weight for it, which is no big deal. And this is what I'm talking about. These these clips right here, 
they have uh, such close space that the uh, modern day weights don't fit inside of them. These are the type of uh, weights that work best on them. But as you can see, the pendulum leader wires is ticking away. I need to get the minute hand on it so I can um, test the uh, bellows and music. I could also test it from these access doors. Sorry about this. I got the camera on one hand and trying to put the minute hand on with the other hand. I did notice that the uh, music isn't that loud. I think it's because I released the... Uh, the bird and the little man it's not going to work properly so it is taken away but we're going to go ahead and take it apart the next step that I like doing in repairing a clock I already got the uh, the bird and little man released as I like taking out the chains so uh grabbing a hold of one of the links with a pair of pliers and then twisting the connector that the weight goes on will allow the link to come apart and then pulling that chain to get it out of the case and because you're dealing with three different chains you want to pull those chains away from each other so this right here don't happen. And keep the chains separately. That way they don't get all tangled up. Again, grabbing a hold of one of the links with a pair of pliers. And then twisting, grabbing a hold of the link that is connected to this piece with a pair of pliers. And then twisting the link will allow it to come free. And a lot of times, because these are thin pieces of wire, you can break a link no big deal you have 72 inches worth of links and that's the typical uh, standard length of chains is 72 inches next step is to take the bellows out or to take the music box out but you want to take plenty of pictures before you do anything. Or in this case, a video. Because I'm not for sure what 
tripped what? Like I said, this is the uh, first one of these clocks that I'm dealing with. And this shows that the cuckoo post, let me get something to point with. This shows that the cuckoo post is what trips the music, I believe. At least the cuckoo post is bent. Yeah, when the cuckoo bird goes forward, let me get the music to quit playing. When the cuckoo bird goes forward, the cuckoo post is bent to where it's going to trip the music. Something is going to be stopping the governor band from playing until the cuckoo is done. And I don't see what stops the um, the governor band from playing because it looks like the music will play the same time the cuckoo will play so something has to stop the governor band from playing Let me see if I'm just trying to figure it out, folks. You and I are figuring this out together. Okay. So what stops the music from playing is the little man is this little man's trip arm. So there's this uh, piece right here that would stop the music from playing until the cuckoo bird. comes back in and then if I had the little man still connected let me get him to come outside uh, his spot This is what these hemostat pliers are really good for, is to grab a hold uh, of things so they don't move on you. So now the little man is out, but the music can't play because this little lever that the little man is connected to is preventing it from playing. So I have to figure out where this wire needs to be in order for the music to play while the little man is outside. I'm talking this wire right here. This is what is connected to the post for the little man to go outside. The cuckoo
trips the music box when it comes forward and then when it comes back it allows this to play but this wire is what stops the um, music from playing I just noticed that the uh, movement is loose too you see that the screws are not all the way tightened down no big deal but so anyway the music can play now because I pushed this wire out of the way which was what's stopping it but I have to figure out how to um, how to uh, get it to not play as the cuckoo is cuckooing. And I think it's this wire just needs to be adjusted just a little bit. But we'll figure that out when we put this all back together. But right now, we need to take it all out. On this side is the trip levers for the cuckoo, which is typically a Herbert Herr movement. But the guy told me what this uh, movement was, and it's supposed to be one of the oldest um clock making companies there are cuckoo clock uh companies there are but that is yet to be determined i hope you are enjoying this video presentation but we'll come back now that i know what supposed to happen i'm gonna take the uh, low note lift bellow out which is typically the bellow on the left side after I find my screwdriver Like I was telling you in one video, I think I have ADHD or ADD or whatever because I get involved in so much stuff and, and I, I tend to get bored sometimes. Uh, sometimes I can't keep up with stuff. The wire came off of it the actual wire that connects to the bellow and so uh, I always with at least one bellow take a rubber band or in this case a hair tie because I like using the hair ties better and I will wrap that wire to that bellow 
That way I know which bellow is what. The uh, hinge on the uh, bellow, well, the final part of the bellow is coming off. So we'll have to do some uh, repair on that. And I think I have to take the music box out next. There's two screws holding this music box. And I've never, you know, I have over 100 cuckoo clocks. And I've never seen I've never seen a German made cuckoo clock. I had to catch myself there. A German made cuckoo clock where the cuckoo trips the music. And because the cuckoo trips the music, it might be that this clock it might be that this clock plays music on both the hour and half hour but I'm looking to see if there are two holes in the drum which I believe there are I'm going to take my permanent marker here and put a mark on there because that's where one hole is. And that's where another hole is. So it plays music on both the hour and half hour because there's two holes in the music drum and I told you before that the Popo cuckoo clocks are designed to where every time the cuckoo comes out the door that it plays music there's only one hole in the Popo music drum Technically, because it's a one-day clock, it should only play music on the hour. But because of its design, it plays music on both the hour and the half hour, and you have to pull the weight for the, um, for the music twice as much as you do for the um, time and strike. And the reason why I'm hesitating about talking is because I was looking at this wire right here. There's a wire right here, and I'm not for sure what that wire is for, whether that wire is broken or or what there's also a wire right here that is supposed to stop the governor fan and playing music <coughs> and I think and that is the wire that stops the governor fan from playing music until this lever comes back. And so um, 
it was playing music before because that wire wasn't touching the governor fan. So we're going to have to investigate this wire and that wire more. You should be able to see a wire here and this obvious wire here. We'll have to investigate it more as we go along. And here you can see the dampers that I was telling you about in a, the music um, video. And so um, the music box video. And these things are typically glued on. So we're going to set this to the side. Now we're going to take off this top bellow. And this top bellow is put in differently than a typical uh, cuckoo clock bellow. I'm sorry, and I apologize all the time, but my lighting in my workstation sucks. And um, <clears throat> I, I bought my house in 2008, and I put a brand new ceiling fan in my bedroom in 2008 and I spent quite a bit of money on it but the uh, light fixture has gone bad and with my health issues I don't feel comfortable on a ladder anymore so um, that's why I haven't replaced my ceiling fan I don't feel comfortable looking over my head like you would have to to do something like that. But I also want to take this pendulum leader wire off. Like I said, I don't want to damage it. And all you have to do is put a screwdriver in there, give it a little twist, and it'll give you enough space to take it off. Like so. As straight as an arrow. That's how I want to keep it. So now there are four screws that I have to take off. And so that's what I'm going to do now. Off camera. What it says down here is the Welby Corporation. So I have to research that. But what I want to do is find out who makes this movement. So I have all the plate diagrams on my computer that I was discussing in earlier videos. So now I want to find this plate. And so looking at it, this hole right here and this hole right here is kind of different. So that's what I'm going to look for when I'm looking through these plate diagrams. Very similar to that. And what, what I say, it's a her. But I haven't quite found it. But it's very similar to this. I got a lot of pictures on my computer 
And so, uh, the closest thing I found was this, and it is made by her, or at least that one is, and it shows that it takes 420 grams of weight. But the, um, this exact movement, I have not found yet. So uh, I'm going to do some research on eBay and the computer to see whether I could see this movement. Um, the reason why I say it to her is because of this lever right here. Her uses this to stop the cuckoo bird. They also have these levers on the outside to trip the cuckoo bird. And so that's why, from my experience, it's a her movement. But this says it's a Welby Corporation. Again, this herb movement has got the same setup. 420 grams. This herb movement doesn't have that same setup. But this herb movement is the closest one to it. The only thing different is this middle section here. And it has the exact same setup. This hole is that hole. This hole is that hole. The center hole is that hole. I don't have a good enough picture to show the height, but here it shows the width is 75.5. Let me get a tool to measure it. And it's always in centimeters. I mean millimeters. Width 75.5. So, that might not be a good enough drawing or this exact same system as that. I'm still saying that this is a, her movement that the Well Corporate Corporation used. Again, I hope you all are liking this video. But as far as me taking this thing apart, it has been oiled. The clock was ticking. It looks like uh, maybe a bushing was put in. Function test. If I can get the function test to work. get that wire out of the way the cuckoo is bouncing in and out 
and that could be this wire right here needs to be adjusted. I got to figure out why the cuckoo bird is bouncing in and out. This shouldn't be doing that. Not on a her movement. But we'll figure it out. The reason why the cuckoo bird was bouncing in and out, and it's been a while since I worked on one of these clocks, is because I told you that this lever right here, this tab right here, is what puts the cuckoo out. And this tab wasn't dropping like it's supposed to. Well, I take that back. It, it, it's not dropping like it's supposed to. And when it drops properly is when the bird stays out. I'll show it to you again. See, the cuckoo's not bouncing back and forth, and that's because this tab here this tab here dropped. You see it bouncing? It's because this tab didn't drop. It's because this allows it to drop. This lever right here that's attached to this black wire. And now that it's dropped, it, the cuckoo doesn't bounce. So you have to figure out how to... Um, how to get this lever to to drop to move out of the way from this lever one more time slow motion i tripped the cuckoo bird the cuckoo bird is now going out and staying out One more time. The cuckoo bird is going out and staying out. But there, it's, it's bouncing. So, I got to, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a tab inside here that pushes this black lever out of the way when the cuckoo functions. You know, I, I do so many videos and I work on so many clocks that even I don't remember at all so you have to excuse me if I don't remember every little every little thing but I do know what I need to do to resolve it I don't know if I'm going to be able to get something small enough to point at. But the second wheel here has got a, we'll call it a tab on it. 
and that is what pushes this black lever out of the way. Now I gotta find something small enough to point at to see if you could see it. The end of the screwdriver is touching it. That cam is what pushes that black lever out of the way. And maybe when I rotate this, this hole or this hole will show that cam. There's the, the cam. Ah. Here's the cam right here. That's what pushes the black lever out of the way. For the cuckoo bird to function properly. And if your cuckoo bird is bouncing, it's because the cam is not pushing that black lever out of the way. And it's probably because there's not enough space between this wire and this wire and it's putting a bind on it. In this case, it's not bouncing, but the cuckoo bird is not going outside its door. So I'm going to bend this lever some and see what happens now. I tripped the cuckoo. I say I tripped the cuckoo. There it's tripped. Cuckoo bird comes out. That tab is pushing the black lever out of the way. This rod that goes in the slot has dropped to allow the cuckoo bird to stay outside the door while it's cuckooing and the wire got in a bind and so that's why I'm gonna do that again to make sure that this wire that's on that attaches to the door was not stopping it from bouncing in fact, I'm going to take that wire off because it's getting in my way and I can put it back on later. So now the wire's out of the way. So now I want to trip the cuckoo bird again and see if it bounces it's not bouncing this tab did what it needs to do the cuckoo bird is not bouncing in and out of the door so i'm not going to take this movement apart the only thing i'm going to do is figure out how to get the um the uh music to play after it's done cuckooing. And by the way, 
this tab right here, when it's done cooking, when this rack comes all the way up, watch what happens to the rack stop lever. It hits this tab, which causes it to quit cuckooing. If this doesn't hit this tab, and if it's dirty, or if you are missing, see it has this, um, it has an E-clip on this side, but it has a, a, um, spacer a compression spacer on this side of the movement and if it doesn't have all that stuff which allows it to rock back and forth like this plenty of inch shake then it's not ever going to drop and so again watch what happens to this when I lift up this rack it hits that just a little bit is all it takes, which in turn brings it back up in the air, which in turn will stop the clock from cuckooing because the third wheel warning pin is now hitting the rack stop levers tab and the pin on the rack stop lever falls in. I went over 30 some minutes, so I had to restart. Um, when the clock is done cuckooing, certain things need to happen. This being the rack stop lever, because it is what stops the rack, but it also between this and the cam with gathering pen or what I call Pac-Man. It's easier for me to say that. When it's done cuckooing, certain things need to happen. The third wheel with warning pen, which is right here, hits this tab that's bent over on the on the rack stop lever. This tab pushes down on the shaft, which will in turn drop that, I mean, uh, lift up that shaft, which in turn will stop, will drop this back down, and therefore it will no longer cuckoo. Because this is a Herber Her movement, it has the eight point star wheel inside the movement. And I have a video specifically on what to do with the eight point star wheel movement. The high note lift lever which is the longest lever and the low note lift lever share a space between the pens themselves the gong lever should be barely off which it is hopefully you could see it is barely off one of these pens if it was in between these pens, the low note lift lever and the gong would share the same space when it's done cuckooing. And that's not what you want. High note lift lever and the low note lift lever share the same space. The gong shares a space all by itself. Close to, but not touching the pen. And when I say close to, the nearest pen. But not touching it. Because if it was touching it, when the clock goes into warning, the 
gong would bounce and it goes into warning about five minutes until it strikes. People asked me here recently, what do you mean when a clock goes into warning? Currently, the third wheel warning pin is touching the rack stop lever. When a clock goes into warning, let me put some pressure on this thing. When a clock goes into warning, the lift lock lever is going to lift the rack stop lever just a little bit. And when that happens, the third wheel warning pin is no longer touching the tab on the rack stop lever. It is now touching a tab on the lift lock lever to prevent it from cuckooing. And after that lift lock lever, which is got tabs that come off the uh, center arbor with minute wheel, after it drops, the third wheel warning pin gets out of the way and then the clock starts striking in a case with a a uh, a clock that has a gong or a Westminster chimes or whatever but in a cuckoo case it starts cuckooing and I want to see if I could find that third wheel warning pin hitting the tab right here and I don't know if you could see it but right here is the tab on the lift lock lever currently that tab is hit that third wheel warning pin is hitting that tab so Again, after the tab, the rack, the lift lock lever drops, the third wheel warning pin comes away from that tab, and your clock starts to strike, cuckoo, chime, whatever. If your clock doesn't, and it's because that tab that is hitting that third wheel warning pin is bent wrong and you have to fix it. And so when I'm going to see if I could do this on video and show you, I want you to watch this pen right here. I, I, I got to see if I could do this all on video. I have pressure on the gray wheel. I wish I had a, somebody here to help me. I'm going to turn the minute hand to get the clock and warning. And I want you to watch if I could do this without hitting anything. I want you to watch this pen right here. Did you see it move? I hope you've seen it moved because it's now at five minutes till the hour or thereabouts. And if your gong tab was touching that, your gong just went like that. 
I'm going to see if I could do it again. Right now it's going to cuckoo. Okay, so again, if I can keep my fingers out of the way, watch this tab right here. you see it move it's now in warning and so for those people who think that I don't know what I'm talking about I just proved to you that I do know what I'm talking about and the only reason that I know these things is because I've experienced these things Again, I hope y'all are liking this video set. I'm going to load all these videos, and there's several different ones, um, onto my computer and see where we're at and go from there. But I don't think I'm going to have, um, I don't want two hour videos. Uh, I watch, YouTube gives me analysis of, of, um, the watch time in my videos. And yes, there are some people who watch my videos to the end. But for the most part, out of all the people who start watching my videos, I only keep their interest for about five minutes. I guess I'm boring as hell. So anyway, I don't want two-hour videos. I like to keep my videos right around an hour. And so I'm going to see the time frame that I have on this video set. And I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, continue on. Uh, so we're probably going to have to have a part two to this video. And so um, I hope for the people who watched it this far, I hope that you learned something. Because that's what this video set is all about. Me taken my experience and my knowledge and providing it to you and for those people who stuck with me till the end I thank you very much but may God bless each and every one of you and stay tuned for the second part of this video because we will learn things and in this case, we will learn things together. And here, using the, uh, I told you the best trademark uh, site out there, Mercurlisk, or I can't pronounce it. It shows that the Welby, it's marked Welby, Welby Corporation, Clocks Barometer, Chicago, Illinois, USA, registered on 310-1956. This clock was made in the 50s or 60s time span, I believe. But they did, make, did not make clocks. They sold clocks, basically. Here, where it says the quail and cuckoo clock was imported by Germany by Welby in the 1950s on that particular uh, clock. Here's another circular 1950 AJ clock from Welby Corporation, made by Herbert Herr. 
and here's a clock earlier um, circular 1950s 8 day clock from Welby Corporation made by Herbert Herr again the Welby Corporation is from Chicago Illinois and FYI I don't believe the Welby Corporation made any clocks they were a corporation, just like uh, Hecko and Henry Kohler. Uh, they didn't make clocks. They sold clocks. Uh, Welby Corporation, you could find anniversary clocks and a bunch of other clocks that have the Welby Corporation logo on them. But unlike George Cool, George Cool had clocks imported from Germany, but he put those cases together and put his name on them. I believe George Cool actual was capable of making uh, cuckoo clocks, but I don't believe the Welpy Corporation made any clock. I think they were like the Heco Company, and they just put their stamp on them. If, uh, if anybody disagrees with what I'm saying or can pro pro provide me with information, uh, please let me know. When in doubt, go to the NAWCC uh, postings. Here it says... I don't know if I agree with this posting, but here it says the use of rack and snail strike setup would place this no earlier than the 1950s. But um, Welby was named, used by Welby Division of the Elgin National Watch Company and can be seen on a variety of imported clocks. Again, it just, uh, like Seth Thomas, Seth Thomas did not make any cuckoo clocks. Seth Thomas put their name on cuckoo clocks to sell clocks. It's a money thing. That's all it is. Welby did not make cuckoo clocks. They imported clocks made in Germany. Stamp their name. I'm having uh, phone issues. But as I was saying, Welby did not make any clocks. They imported clocks to their company in Chicago, Illinois, stamped their name on it just to sell clocks. And that's all it was. Um, but according to the trademark, the trademark was given um, the Welby Corporation trademark was given or registered on 1956. It's the exact same movement that I'm that I have. This little cutout version here is the exact same section as the movement that I have, and that's the clock that the gentleman. Uh, it's asking questions about in the NAWCC. There's the clock itself. Looks very similar to the clock that I'm working on, except for my clock has music. Um... They're saying it's an eight day. I'm going to have to look at the Muma again because I wasn't paying attention to see if it is an eight day and if it is an eight day clock, the 320 gram weights are not for eight day clocks. Here, I might learn something with this clock. 
Here the instructions say for assembly of a Welby 8A cuckoo clock. Here is the clock. Here is the movement. This movement is not the same as my movement. Sorry. I counted my wheels on my movement, and it's a one day. One, the great wheel, the second wheel, the escapement wheel being the third wheel. In this clock, there's the great wheel, the second wheel, the third wheel, and over here is the escapement wheel. This movement is different from my movement. I just saw this cutout version. I wasn't paying attention to all the rest of the stuff. So yes, this is an eight-day Herbert Herr movement because it has this little lever right here and it has the trip arm as the Herbert Herr movements do and it has this rod right here which is famous for Herbert Herr this piece right here to sh to stop the clock so this is an eight-day movement and mine is a one-day movement.